This is Kelly Hill, technology reporter with RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Wilhelm Koisken of the Fraunhofer, Fraunhofer Heinrich Hertz Institute in Germany. Um, and you've been doing 5G channel sounding work. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and the demo that we have here today? Okay. In this demo, we showcase channel sounding at 99 gigahertz, which is a very high frequency in the millimeter wave range with three millimeter wavelengths but it is seen as some candidate bands for, for 5G communication because there's a lot of spectrum available. Of course, 99 gigahertz is somehow an upper limit. Uh, there are also candidate bands around 30 gigahertz, 40 gigahertz, 70 and 80 gigahertz, but we show, we say, the upper limits, what can be done with uh, channel sounding. Um, so we're here at the LTE Innovation Summit and, uh, and you have a demo set up. Can you tell us a little bit about the equipment and, uh, and, and what you're showing um, here with, uh, with the screens and, uh, and the demo? So basically channel sounding is the measurement of the um, radio wave propagation from a base station to user equipment. And so we have a very small um, propagation um, set up here yes. where we transmit from this from this point here okay. um, to this point here so it's somehow a mini channel sounding demo and uh, so uh, at the transmitter side we generate a specific signal and at the receiver side we uh, receive the signal and analyze it and from that we gain some certain insights into the channel properties which means here, for example, here you see the channel impulse response and you see that you have a very strong direct pass here and then some reflections. And if I, for example, block the, um, block the, um, the line of uh, side path, then uh, the signal is gone. So, and we built this uh, setup in cooperation with uh, Rodo and Schwarz, where we used um, on the transmitter side um, an arbitrary waveform generator and a vector signal generator and at the receiver side a signal analyzer and then we um, connected to this Roland Schwarz um, uh, equipment external um, millimeter wave components which are these nice golden uh, things here and also one specific unit which is used for the synchronization of the measurements because everything can be uh, taken apart a lot of lot uh, far away than this uh, two meters here mm -hmm. and then you cannot have a cable in between and so you have to do something uh, uh, to accomplish synchronization and this is done with this uh, little boxes here from from our side so this is a joint demo between our institute and Rodo and Schwarz and just so that um, my audience understands channel sounding is one of the initial processes that has to be uh, researched in order to establish uh, propagation behaviors and, and, and channel behaviors yeah. before we start really getting into some of the more detailed 5G specifications, is that correct? Yeah, basically channel sounding is the first step. So from channel sounding this is measurement and then you try to extract from this measurement data the, um, let's say the most specific characteristics of the channel and then from that you do some, some modeling so that you are able to reproduce some, some, some channels in, in simulations which are similar to the, to the real environment. Mm -hmm. And this is done, uh, yeah, this is called channel modeling and these, are usual, these channel models are usually standardized so that every vendor can use, uh, can use the same channel model and then you can compare uh, stuff, uh, performance of, of equipment. And so this is the Basically, in standardization, this is the first step to do this channel models, but as a prerequisite to channel models, you have to do this channel measurements and to, you have to estimate yeah, the, the specific parameters. Mm -hmm. And so channel measurements are uh, yeah, nowadays very, uh, yeah, there's a very big initiative about channel measurements for this 5G, because 5G is uh, already starting and then yeah as I told you need these measurements at first step. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how the channel is different uh, at these higher frequencies you know how the propagation characteristics are different at um, you know these these millimeter wave frequencies as opposed to cellular? So 
basically the the radio channel is is the same for for every frequency. So you have a you have certain ways the wave can propagate. So there's a direct way, and then you have reflected passes. Um, but the main difference between the millimeter waves and lower frequencies is that you have a higher attenuation uh, due to the higher frequency on the one hand, and then you have a higher penetration losses. So you can even block this uh, waves, millimeter waves with your body. And so um, the millimeter wave communication is intended more or less for situations where you have a direct line of sight between um, transmitter and receiver. But yeah, this is somehow uh, a disadvantage, but the main advantage is that you have a lot of spectrum available. So from an engineering perspective, it is not the best way to use these higher frequencies, but uh, with respect to the achievable data rates, it's, yeah. There's not a lot of other, not a lot of other options. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Great, well, Wilhelm, thank you so much, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much.